This episode of New Jersey Living is being recorded in Glen Ridge, New Jersey. Glen Ridge is a name that, like many of the other places that we've taken a look at here on New Jersey Living, you may not hear very frequently because it is a relatively small town, small population. It is very much a sliver of a town, and I mean very small. Some sections are only a few blocks in width, but it's tucked neatly in between Montclair to the west and Bloomfield to the east and East Orange to the very, very south. So if you've been watching any of these episodes when I'm in Essex County, I will often refer to this general area as being one of the most aesthetically beautiful uh, communities and general neighborhoods. When you're talking about Montclair, West Orange, South Orange, Maplewood, Nutley, uh, sections of Bloomfield, I mean, these are at Glen Ridge is very much a part of that. You're gonna see some very, very uh, exceptional road footage in this particular episode. Um, this is what I consider to be that Mecca of New Jersey suburbs, with that true Mecca being Montclair, which is directly next door. So with Glen Ridge, we're not gonna see like uh, much of a downtown. I'm gonna pan around a little bit right now uh, that you'll see um, right here uh, at the train station. So you know where I'm going with that when I get into the big three. But uh, Blue Foundry Bank right here behind me, post office on the other side. And then we had uh, Bank of America directly across if you didn't take notice. So this is uh, my estimation along with uh, some of those other communities, some of the most beautiful neighborhoods that you're going to see, all right, uh, in Northern New Jersey. And we see the benefits of location and we're gonna, again, I'm gonna hold off on that uh, until we get into this next segment, but just kind of give you a little bit of a starting point. We're not far uh, from the high school as well. Um, this is certainly a um, town that doesn't get a lot of notoriety per se, but uh, locally, certainly well recognized as one of those really, really uh, higher end quaint neighborhoods. All right, so we're gonna jump into the next segment, get, a, get into a few more details. Those who are definitely uh, checking in for the first time, welcome aboard, I'll see you at the next scene. Welcome to New Jersey Living. My name is Corey Jones, and I'm a real estate agent here in New Jersey with Coldwell Banker Realty. And my job is to bring content like this to viewers like you. So if you are interested in learning all things New Jersey, obviously the real estate market, places to dine, social entertainment scenes, iconic locations. This is a channel that you certainly want to go ahead and click like, subscribe, and the notification bell. For the Jersey Hunters who have been following along, welcome back and welcome to those new members. Feel free to drop in commentary and keep the commentary constructive and positive, please. Because what we want to do is we want to add a lot of different insights, experiences, and even questions to this community. So here we are in Glen Ridge, New Jersey. I'm going to pan around here. We're not even at the first stop yet, but we are about a maybe, maybe about, I'd say, a half block. I'm gonna walk down just a little um, as you can take in more of the neighborhood here. We are about a block from the train station and this type of community is one where you have these storybook scene of, of like streets like the one that I'm on right now right so I'm gonna keep uh, panning a little bit as I walk down a little bit of a drizzle going on if you can't tell on the uh, uh, on the video, but it's a uh, very slight. So this is uh, a community of only about 7,000 residents. Um, I don't have the actual square mileage of the town, uh, quite honestly, but uh, it can't be much more uh, than maybe a square mile or two. Uh, very, very small geographically, um, but while small and not having like that um, quintessential downtown feel, we are neighboring to Montclair. So we're only a very, very short drive away from the Montclair uh, dining scene. 
train station is here in town and schools we're going to jump into that right now high school is actually just uh, beyond this curve as i pan around a little bit here giving you a better look of things uh high school is right here almost in front of me just beyond the street line so this is a community where i'm gonna start with uh train you've already seen that flash up another quick picture local train these are the big three other items that drive demand here in the real estate market for northern new jersey local train we get a check mark train is here second is proximity we already mentioned where montclair gonna flash the map up we are very very close proximity to manhattan uh, a drive into the city from this location we're talking about maybe 35 minute and when we are talking about schools i'm going to flash that up glen ridge very very high rated public school system all right so this one is going to have a check mark on all three demand high and it's going to be reflective in the price points that we are going to see all right so we're here at another stop i'm just gonna pan again so you can kind of get some of the neighborhood aesthetic and i'm going to just kind of come down to the corner a little bit here and hand behind me and start coming back the other way this is the high school directly behind me just over my my shoulder here all right so high demand location because of this type of setting that you're seeing right now and those other three check marks that um i've already placed up on the screen so we are going to look at three properties that were recent sales it's a smaller community so within the past 30 days there were only two sales had to go back a little further maybe about 45 50 days to find that third um we're going to see entry well i'm saying entry level loosely because we're just referencing these three properties but still safely your entry level is comfortably going to be uh in a high 600 700 range uh, and most of um, inventory that you're gonna find in Glen Ridge is going to be over 1 million um, so this is going to be one of those more higher price point exclusive communities um, but as in many cases particularly in this area of the state you, you're gonna get what you pay for all right um, taxes certainly we're in Essex County so it's gonna be higher than those uh, taxes that we've seen in similar areas of, of neighborhood, like say a Summit or a Westfield um, taxes, well, particularly Westfield, that'd be a lot lower uh, tax point there. Um, but we're in an area where you have, uh, again, true unique kind of aesthetic that you just don't find anywhere. All right, so we are going to make our way to our first stop and catch some road footage along the way. I'll see you there. And this episode of New Jersey Living has a special bonus feature. We often refer to situations where there are flips in communities and you walk into situations where you have brand new renovated properties. Here we get a glimpse of one in process. So many thanks to my colleague, Mondi Cole, who lent her time and resources and knowledge because this is a personal flip that she's doing. Uh, we're able to get uh, uh, opportunity to take a look inside of a flip, some exterior footage as well, get an idea of what it looks like, what she plans to do with it. And this is a property that will come to market probably in the fall around the September, maybe October timeframe. Uh, so my intention is to get back to that property once it's done and we'll have a follow-up Glen Ridge a little later this fall that would include the flip. All right, so enjoy the footage. Thanks again to Mondi. And I hope you appreciate this opportunity that we have not had met on any occasion thus far, but we have one here. So enjoy the ride. Here we are at our first stop. So across the street directly behind me, flash up a quick pick of 147 Carteret Street. Uh, nice little quiet street. I'm gonna pan around just a little. You'll see uh, opposite side of the street. A lot of homes are a bit elevated up on the hill. Um, directly off of Ridgewood Ave, neighboring uh, this uh, door down from um, Open Field Park, uh, just a few steps away. 
So this is our first feature and this particular property did not last on the market uh, very long at all. Uh, renovated property that was uh, listed at, I wanna say if y'all flash up the uh, numbers just to make sure I'm correct, I believe 649 list and sold at 753. Three bedroom, one full bath, two halves, but recently renovated. So this one, although the uh, exterior doesn't necessarily reflect um, uh, recent uh, upgrade per se, but the uh, interior was. So just panning around again, just getting a general feel for the uh, aesthetic, kind of pan up a little bit so you can see these properties on this side. Uh, a lot of the homes are gonna be in a somewhat around World War II. Um, you may have some of these in the 50s, uh, uh, but certainly you'll find your share pre-war as well. Uh, and these particular styles of colonials. But this is uh, what you would very much consider to be a entry level um, opportunity here in, in Glen Ridge. So if you've seen some uh, foot, uh, road footage already, we're gonna take a little bit more as we get back down to Ridgewood Ave. So Ridgewood Ave is the main thoroughfare that cuts through uh, Glen Ridge north and south and our next two properties are on that main thoroughfare now although they're on the main thoroughfare that is a relatively um slower moving traffic street and properties tend to have a lot of acreage to sit on so they're not sitting really up on the road always so you'll get a taste of that as well when you take a look at some of the road footage all right so this is stop number one i'll see you at the next stop second stop at 155 Ridgewood Ave. Uh, pan around just so you get a look at Ridgewood Ave. You've seen some street footage uh, on Ridgewood Ave, but this is a little pan scene. This is the feature road uh, coming through, traversing north to south and south to north, which way, depending on which way you're oriented, uh, through Glen Ridge. Uh, this right here, as you can see behind me, is a large English Tudor was five bedroom, three and a half baths, listed at 1.25, sold at 1.3, one week on the market. Uh, you can see the tax number is just short of 40,000 for the taxes. That's you, that's indicative, is reflective of where we are in, in Essex. All right, so these are numbers that you'll see when we're getting into that comfortably uh, over a $1 million range right here. Uh, there are other areas of the state, however, where same price point, you're not gonna have that same tax number in say like a Ridgewood or a Westfield, but here is it kind of comes as a, as a premium for the location. Um, so this particular property, uh, there is a renovation going on and underway right now as I'm filming. I have to, uh, caught sight of the construction crews as I was uh, pulling up, just taking a look at the property. And uh, yeah, this is certainly something that um, it seems like is going to have some degree of upgrade uh, right away with the new, uh, the new owners. From a commute to the city standpoint, Ridgewood Ave is where the train station is also. So a few blocks north of where we are right now, certainly walkable. Uh, there's a train station there and the high school is right there by the train station as you observed a little earlier. Um, so this is, because of the smallness of the community presents a certain convenience in being able to get to both schools uh, and train station, right? So uh, you can get by as well without having that downtown being that you're neighboring to both Bloomfield and to Montclair. So those both have a very, very um, robust downtown scene, particularly Montclair. And um, if you can live with that not being in town, this is certainly not a bad option. All right, so this is stop number one along Ridgewood. We have one more as we are gonna elevate just a little bit in terms of price point to take a look uh, at 
the property for our final stop. So take, uh, take in some more of this uh, neighborhood footage that we have and I'll see you at the next stop. our final stop uh, still on Ridgewood F on the northern end in front of 272 which is this spectacular Victorian totally renovated you know when I say renovated we're talking uh, quartz countertop Viking appliances multi-zone heating um, 4,000 plus square foot including a finished basement uh, tried to take a couple shots of uh, the property so you can get a glimpse of the three car garage in the back, which has living space above the garage. There could be any number of things. Studio, uh, could be uh, an additional uh, apartment space or uh, rec room, you name it. Uh, any number of things it could be. But this uh, is an example of a property that was constructed, certainly turn of the century, right around 1900. Um, pan around, you'll see that a lot of neighboring homes have a similar uh, older aesthetic to them in terms of construction year general age of the properties before they were renovated or updated to where they were right now I'm gonna walk down to one right now that is certainly worth a look because it has like almost a um, cathedral kind of feel to it uh, you've got a obviously a school dismissal going on at the same time try to avoid those but it's hard to do it all the time but this right here I think is definitely worth a look so wanted to walk you down here to get a glimpse of this now this is example of what you'll see not absolutely exclusive to where we are right now but certainly unique to the area right so this is almost like living in a uh, historic uh, building church if you will but you don't get a lot of this in places that you go right um, so yeah who uh, would love to be able to have an opportunity just to kind of preview interior uh, for this kind of location so uh, this uh, particular property where we just came from list price was uh, 1.65 sold at 1.7 only 10 days on market uh, bedroom and baths I don't recall all those details but you see the flash up there as well taxes were certainly more friendly 25,000 for this particular um, property could be um, could be lot size that factored in on that I'm not hundred percent sure uh, this is kind of speculation um, but this is a taste of again Glen Ridge which is like I mentioned multiple times smaller community but checks off on the big three in a major way. Uh, and although you don't have that walkable downtown, you're certainly not far from the premium downtown location of Montclair. Here we are with some bonus footage for our Glen Ridge episode. I am here with a colleague, Mondi Cole, also with Coldwell Banker. And behind us right here is 72 Bay Ave in Glen Ridge. And this is a property that Mondi decided to take on as an investment of her own. So she's in the flip process and she's going to get into a few details about this journey, what led her here and what they're doing with this particular property. Yeah. Okay. Well, hello everyone. So like Corey mentioned, um, this is an investment property. Um, so I purchased this property back in December of 2022. Um, and we are in the process of renovating it. What we're doing is we've decided to create an, an entire third floor to this property. The property originally was three bedrooms and one and a half baths. So half, half bath, being on the half on the first on, on the first main okay. floor, and then a main bathroom and three okay. bedrooms on the on the upstairs. Um, and what we've decided to do was do a bit of expansion. Can, can you walk with me? Yep, I can yep, show yep, you. yep, okay, absolutely. So we'll walk with her. Yep, walk with me. And uh, on that same note, this was on oil, right? They had an yes, oil tank yes, at one so point. it was on oil, um, and we decided to go, you know, to change out the, uh, the, the, the oil into forced air with central air. 
um, forced air heat. So um, there was an oil tank, but it was removed. And so all of that has been done. And what we've decided to do, I'm not sure if you can see, oh, there's a car. Oh. Now we're gonna get into this just oh, okay. momentarily yeah. because okay. well, what is unique about this particular property is this driveway that you see behind me right now is um, a shared driveway, so it's an easement. Yeah. So it's shared for this property and I'm gonna pan around just a little so you'll see that there are a few other properties right off of this driveway, okay? So yeah. it is a shared driveway, but the garage that you see right here behind me does belong to this property, but Mondi, We'll get into those details in just a minute. Yeah. But yeah. the tank that she mentioned uh, was underground at one point. That was taken out, right? Yeah, and replaced with the newer with, one. Yeah, with, a, with an above ground, which is which, which is fine, but we're not gonna keep keep the oil. Um, right. But what I wanted to show you was, up, up, if you see on the second floor, that was essentially the master uh, bedroom for the third floor, the biggest bedroom on the third floor. And we've decided to extend that and make that a, a, a so essentially a, a second master so there's going to be a master bedroom on the third floor and another um essentially a second master on the sec on the second floor along with two bedrooms and then a, and then another main bath so the house will now have four bedrooms three and a half baths um and yes yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be gorgeous when it's done i'm really excited and uh, give us a little uh, kitchen concept because obviously when the property when you bought it it probably was not as open right yeah, so we basically we opened up everything so maybe maybe should we try to walk in now or do you yeah, just want to do so we're going to take a quick stroll inside so we okay. get some interior footage yeah. and uh we'll be right back with uh, some photos and a little video of the interior now we're inside and we are going to take a little bit of a brief tour you just have to bear with the hammer and nails part of the process but we're going to take a look at what is transforming in this particular space and Monty is also going to touch on some of the historic dynamics that impact any type of renovation work in Glen Ridge. All right, so let's get to it now. Okay, so we are currently standing in the house and we are in the living room space here. And as you can see, this is what most people want nowadays, which is your open concept, open space. We did have to add steel, steel beams. We tore down walls here. Um, there was another like whole bedroom actually down here. I forgot to mention that. Bedroom or an office that they had sectioned off here. We opened all of this out. Watch your step. Um, and we added uh, additional steel beams here to just create this open concept. Um, back here will be the kitchen area. Um, we plan on um, a very big island, probably 10 or 11 feet, um, and then the kitchen will sort of will, will sort of um, span around here. Um, we're going to keep this door, and then we're going to we're going to extend the deck. We're going to extend the deck in the back, um, and the deck will actually be like an L-shaped deck. So it'll be in the back here, and then our back will come around the side of the house here on the outside of, of, of this window, and this will be. going to be a nice wraparound deck okay and that's going to sort of expand this area which is the dining room area where you have some, some, some outdoor space and you can put a table out there but it can expand this whole area here and it'll also bring in some additional light so um this this area here that you see framed off is where we're going to do our half bath and then um also um have a pantry here for the kitchen um, yeah, so the fireplace is going to stay intact here. Oh, uh, yeah, so the fireplace will be here, um, and we're going to extend that up with some uh, wood detail and design. It's going to be very, very nice. Um, the whole look and feel of this house, we're, we're going to keep it very, um, we're going to have some wood detail in here, some cream colors, very relaxing. Um, I would say reminiscent of a spa type of type of um, look and feel to the home. Um, we're also going to finish the basement. Um, so I, I don't think it's pretty safe to go down there now because I know they have some equipment and stuff down there. But yeah, but this is pretty Floors much... Floors remaining refinished? Well, we, oh, we're going to do all new. All new, wood, new? Yeah, it's going to be wood flooring, but it'll be all new um, wood flooring. Um, yeah, so... Um, but, you 
know, this process has been, it's, it's, it's a wonderful process. I mean, any, anytime you get able to take transform a space like this, but you have to be aware of like in Glen Ridge, um, they do have a very big historic district, okay? And what that means is that if you're going to do home improvements here, um, especially um, on the out the, the exterior of the home, they, they really don't care you know, what you do on the inside. Of course, you have to get your permits and you, you have to get everything approved for safety reasons and everything like that. But if you do plan on touching the exterior part of the home, they want you to go before their Glen Ridge um, Preservation Society and your materials and whatever you decide to do in terms of if you're, if, you're, if you're building onto the home, anything that can be seen from the street needs to be approved by the Glen Ridge Preservation Society. And so that involves making sure you present your plans to them and, and then attending um, their board meeting, which happens once a month where you get to actually present your plans and you can bring your architect with you and explain what you plan on doing. They also, on their website, they do have guidelines for this process. So if you have any questions or if you're planning on doing some changes to your home or purchasing in Glen Ridge, you may want to go there and really um, research um, what, you know, their, their guidelines or what you need to do to get your plans approved. Um, so for instance, um, with this house, um, we do have this uh, this porch out here. It's a package of stuff on the eye. It's on this porch. And you know, one of the things um, that uh, that was discussed when we were at our meeting were were these posts. So it even gets down to details like posts like this. They want you to keep the original posts, and that's because the detail for a home during this time period would have had posts that looked like this and it's really hard to sort of find replacement posts or just expensive to find replacement posts that actually give you the look and feel of this uh, mid-century home. And so um, they want you to keep this. And, uh, and if you can, you know, they, they want you to do more restoration than actually replacement. And so we decided to do that. Now, um, but on the flip end, you know, and, there are ways where it can save you money and then there are ways where it can be more expensive. So for instance, they wanted us to keep all wood windows. So all the windows that you see from the home, like these are these are the original wood frame windows, six, six light over one light. They want this all to be wood, okay? So you're doing replacement, but with wood so frame? I'm doing replacement with wood frame. So oh, wow. we couldn't go with the, you know, costs. with the vibe, yeah. So, um, now, in certain in certain circumstances, they may allow you to go with vinyl. If let's say you purchase a home and it has vinyl, they you know they, they of course you, they want you to keep your windows um, uniform. So you may be able, but in this case, the front of the house with, with these wood windows. So there's certain things, and then of course like the cedar siding. If you, if the house has cedar, then you you got to keep the cedar. Okay. So, so this will not be vinyl, this will remain, remain seated. Yeah, so any repairs, that, you know, so this is more of a restoration. The front of the house is more of a restoration. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. and so, and, and even if you try to argue in front of the board and you say, well, you know, so-and-so has vinyl next door. The thing is, is that when this board was established, it was established for them to preserve time stop on what was done in the community and now from this point moving forward we're going to try to preserve this particular section and so if anyone wants to do new changes they have to now come before this board so you can't argue and say well my neighbor did this and my neighbor because they may have done that prior to the board being established so we're out here and this is a shared um pretty much a shared street and this driveway is shared with one, two, three, four, five different properties, okay? Um, and the interesting about the interesting thing about this was this was the one thing that sort of gave me pause about buying this property. Um, but then when I actually came up to the property and actually saw how much um, how much how, how big this lot was, I uh, I was sold on the property because I, I, I'll show you a little bit later how far it extends back. Um, but I was, I, it gave me pause because there, there is only one way in and one way out. And so, um, 
you know, the folks here sort of have to wait. If, if there's someone, I don't know if you can pan down here, if there's someone waiting to come in, you know, you may have to back up and let, and let your neighbor in, okay? Um, and then also just, you know, making sure that the driveway is clean. Think about snowy days and that sort of thing. There has to be an agreement amongst the folks up here who's going to shovel and who's going to clean and, and, and how, you know, how you're going to um, manage that. But one of the things is that we learned that um, this is a very tight-knit community and the folks up here all get along and and what worked out really well was that um, when we bought the property they were actually willing to come together and repay get this all repaved so they were sort of waiting for someone to come and do something with this property and actually repave this and make this a little bit nicer and and um, luckily everything worked out because everyone um, seems to get along and they actually mentioned how they sort of like the privacy up here that this is sort of like, you know, I guess their own little private enclave, you know, within within Glen Ridge. So if you come across um, um, easements like this, um, don't always think it's something negative. It can actually be something positive and something that buyers may want just because of the privacy. Because um, as you can see, like this property is sort of propped up on a hill. You do have your own backyard. And then um, let, me, let me show you what's beyond the garage here. So. The, the lot for this land goes all the way back to that boulder there, okay? And so what we plan on doing is um, making this some parking spaces um, for, for, for whoever, you know, buys our home so that if they have a family function or that sort of thing, their family doesn't have to park on the street or around the corner, they can just park here. So we, we intend to add about one, two, three, about four more spaces back here, which will be ample parking for any type of event or something that they may have. And, and of course, someone can always opt to pull into the garage. So anyway, um, yeah, it, you know, what, what I thought would probably would, would, would be a negative thing ends up being a, a, a positive thing. All right, so I want to first thank Mondi for this opportunity to come and add a little bonus footage to our episode and get a nice rundown of some of the dynamics of purchasing in Glen Ridge, because this is something unique. We covered some other areas like Plainfield, for example, if you've seen that episode, where there are certain communities that do carry specific requirements if you were to move in and do renovation work. So this is very uh, educational to have an opportunity to come in, see the property, get a little tour inside. So Mondi, just give us a little close out of what your plans are as yeah. we move forward. Yeah, so this property, we anticipated being on the market late July, early August. If you're interested in buying in Glen Ridge, contact Corey, come see the home, and hopefully you want to purchase. This is a wonderful town, easy commute to the city, nice vibe. You have a lot of, you know, that New York vibe out here. You're a hot, you're adjacent to Montclair and their whole downtown area, wonderful stores, nightclubs, all types of things, museum, art, whatever you're looking for. This is like a little I say this is this is your New Jersey extension of New York City to be honest. So um, yeah, come out and, and like I said, contact Corey if you want to buy. All right, so you got it from Mondi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, we are going to conclude this episode now. I had to add this a little bonus footage, of course. Be sure to click like, subscribe, notification bell, follow us along. We have more content coming. We are actually making a return trip to Montclair, which is truly the mecca of suburbs for New York City. Not just New Jersey, New York City, all right? Yeah. So stay tuned, stay uh, safe, and we'll see you next episode. Take care.